Hello everybody, in this episode I'm going to show you how to draw attention to the model's face and uh, specifically to the eyes. Click the subscribe button and enable the notification with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. So this is the footage we want to work with. I'm gonna create a copy of it. Then select the second, Command Shift E to disable it and replace with After Effect composition. I'm gonna save the composition with uh, Emerald Eye's name. I wanna be able to go back to that and adjust parameters if needed. And this brings me into After Effect. Now, this is my footage. As you can see, it's exactly what we saw in Premiere Pro a minute ago. I'm going to create a null layer and I'm gonna call it Tracker Pupils. And I'm gonna make this part a little bit bigger because we don't need all the space in the timeline. Right, select the movie and track motion. And I'm gonna zoom all the way in so I can play around with the track point. Just gonna position this on the catch light of one of the pupils and uh, there you go, that's right about there. This is the area that needs to be tracked. I'm gonna go back to the beginning, reposition it. There, right about there. And I'm gonna hit track. With that done, edit track, edit target. I'm gonna make sure that tracker pupils is selected and apply. X and Y, there you go. And here you can see all the tracking data. Now, I'm gonna hide the tracker pupils layer. I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. and I'm gonna call it Exposure Pupils. Then into the effects and preset, I'm gonna search for the Lumetri color effect. I'm gonna drag that into the adjustment layer and I'm gonna pick whip the adjustment layer to the tracker pupils. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna select the Exposure layer, Pen tool, and I'm gonna draw a mask around the first pupil. Now, as you can see, the, the pen tool is doing a good job in following the curvature of the object I wanna mask. So this is the first mask. I'm gonna pan over to the other pupil and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. And the mask, it doesn't have to be super precise because we're gonna feather it so it doesn't really have to be super precise. Now, basic correction, exposure. I'm going to bump up the exposure all the way. I wanna see what I'm gonna do now next. Next is about feathering and fine tuning the mask. Now, I'm looking at this mask here and the first thing I wanna do is I wanna increase the feathering. I don't want that harsh separation between the mask and non-masked area. And then I'm gonna expand the mask. In this case, it's negative, so I'm gonna shrink the mask by two pixels. I'm gonna do the same for the other pupil. So I'm gonna close mask one, which is the first pupil we've been working on. I'm gonna pick mask two and, and I'm gonna enter the exact same values. Three pixels for the feather and minus uh, two, three looks fine. Maybe two and a half pixels. Yeah, that looks better. As you can see, this uh, uh, expansion parameter is gonna help to blend in much better. All right. With that done, I'm gonna go back to zero with the exposure and I'm gonna bump it now to the value I would like it to be. Let's say around 3.5. I'm gonna bump up the highlights touch, like so, and I'm gonna bring back the blacks. As you can see, this is really giving realism to the effect. I think something like that in my work. Yeah, that's fine. Now let's see how this looks. As you can see, pupils are, you know, highlighted, I would say. Fine, I'm happy with that. So back to the beginning of the timeline, fit. And next we're gonna create another adjustment layer. This time I want to bring down the exposure of the background, but I do not want to affect the face of the model. So I'm gonna call this adjustment layer exposure face and then again, Lumetri color, I'm gonna drag it in there. 
This time I'm going to pick an elliptical mask and, and try to position it just where I think it should be. I think that's fine. I'm just adjusting the mask attach and again it doesn't have to be super precise because we're going to feather the hell out of it but I just want to make sure that it's roughly where it's supposed to be. I'm going to change the shape slightly so I can cover the neck and I'm going to tie them up from the side and that looks pretty much that looks pretty much it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So back to the Lumetri color, basic correction, exposure, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna lower down the exposure all the way. This is because I wanna see clearly the edges of the mask. Now mask feather here, I think I need to, because the area I'm selecting is much bigger than the pupils we did before, I think I need to and actually, you know what, instead of underexposing, I'm going to overexpose because I think I'm going to see better. All right, I think I'm going to feather it around the 60, 70, something like that. And I'm going to do again the expansion. I'm going to change it to minus 30 is fine. Yeah, bring back the exposure. And uh, now what I want to do be quick tracker let's have a quick look how this works so i'm gonna bump up the exposure again so you can clearly see what's this gonna do and as you can see the you know she doesn't really move a lot the model but uh, the mask sticks to the face so bring back the exposure to zero and 400 Now I'm going to select again the elliptical tool and I'm going to create rough elliptical masks around the eyes of the model. I want to bring even more attention to the eyes. Um, again, bump up the exposure so I can see what I'm doing. But now, because I have two masks on the same layer, I need to disable the mask which is around the face so I can select none here. And actually I'm going to name this face and then this is fine mask too it's, it's okay now mask's feather is something around i think five ten pixels should be fine yeah and again negative expansion of around five three something like that should make it more realistic yeah i think i'm just playing around with the parameters here to see which combination looks better and i think yeah i think i'm happy with that now, I'm going to do the same thing for the other eye. And again, the mask doesn't have to be super precise. I'm just going to position the mask roughly in, uh, on top of the eye. And as you can see, by bumping all the way the exposure, you can clearly see what you're doing. And now I'll try to rotate and adjust a little bit. Now, mask 3, I'm going to enter exactly the same values I have used for the other eye, so... And that should do the trick. As you can see now, those masks as well, because they are in the same layer which is tracking the data, the data that we previously created, they stick to the eyes. So that's fine, I'm happy with that. I bring back the exposure to zero. Okay, so... The point is... is the point is, I want the exposure of the background to go down, but I don't want that to affect neither the eyes nor the face. So what I'm going to do now is, as you can see, if I bring down the exposure, I'm going to affect the face, which is exactly the opposite of what I want to do. So I need to change the mask. Uh, I need to change how the masks are applied. And this is going here and Subtract, as you can see, subtract, and again, subtract. And there you go, there you have it. This is exactly the effect I'm after. 
Now, this is too much, so go back to zero with the exposure. I click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe. And the idea is, as the video moves forward, the exposure of the background goes down. So it becomes darker and darker. And I think the maximum dark value I want is something around negative one. Yeah, something like that. So now I want to ease out this keyframe. So I'm gonna select the first keyframe, right click, and uh, is out and then i'm gonna select the actually you know what i'm gonna show you something cooler so i'm click on the chart here and this here this will show the graph of uh, the values in between the two keyframes so easy out for the first one and uh, easy in for the last one and this is exactly what you get so there is a smooth curve transition in between the exposure zero and exposure negative one or negative two right or it's about negative two and and you can use these handles and uh, and play with uh, with the curve so you can make it smoother you can make it uh, steeper and you can move around stuff um that's it i'm happy with that so this is the final effect hope you like this video and uh, if you do please click the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any future videos